guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike. I am Jay. And we are here to review Ghostbusters after f the Frozen Empire. Two Records. in the box, ready to go. We be hot, and this movie sucked. Uh, <laughs> uh, it didn't suck, okay? I'm just going to say that right away. Obviously, I'm wearing a Ghostbuster shirt. I was very excited going to see the movie. Bought it beforehand. Uh, yeah, I did. I went and bought it beforehand. I'm a bandwagon fan. Uh, but no, I went and bought it beforehand. I went to the theater, very excited to see some bust and ghost situations. And what I left with is a bad taste in my mouth from a crackhead back behind the alleyway. What happens? Uh, you know, it was a great experience. It was a learning experience, but not ultimately something that I would ever go back and do again. Uh, this movie, um, well, let's just go ahead and say, it. I think we called it earlier on, uh, it's made for children. This is definitely a kid's movie. Yeah. I had fun with certain parts of the film. I think that certain parts of the film were filmed very fun uh, uh, or, or very effectively. Uh, the atmosphere was okay. Certain characters were great, uh, namely Paul Rudd was awesome in he this. Was great. Uh, and also Nadim, the character's name is Nadim. I can't remember the the actor's name. He's a stand-up comedian. Uh, ripped. He's the one that got ripped. Yeah, ripped, yeah. sexy guy, but he awesome. Was great. The Flame Master. Um, he was awesome. Uh, everything else just felt. Uh, I don't know. Like it. Like it was. It was entertaining, but I feel like I. Sh I. I need. I need two kids. That belonged to me next to me watching this. Like, look, at, look at this, son. Uh, it's so. It, it felt like a Harry Potter shit. It felt like very Harry Potterish. The more that it went on, and the more it was cemented, especially the uh, library scene. And I'm like, this goddamn Harry Potter. Somebody getting sued, <laughs> dude. Uh, when after seeing Afterlife, which Afterlife was. It was the same. It's the same thing as Afterlife, but Afterlife had all that. It had stuff. more adult to it. Well, it was it was tied into all that Harold Ramis stuff, and like we haven't seen the Ghostbusters in their natural form in so long, and bringing them back that was a different thing. But even then, I felt like, and I feel this, that way about this movie too. This movie feels like it's nothing like the original two Ghostbusters mm. movies. Absolutely nothing like it. It feels like you took the idea of Ghostbusters, and by idea I mean the sellable merchandise part of Ghostbusters, and the music, and the contraptions, and the stuff like that, and you ran it through a 2024 machine of uh, filled in with every demographic. And when I say that, I don't mean like that weird culture war, like women or this or that. By demographic, I mean it feels like a studio produced, yeah, right. AI produced, mass produced to hit. Oh, we're gonna target kids. We're gonna target adults by bringing back the old people. Yeah, we're meaning to get get every single audience member we can in the theater. And it's not actually about an original good movie that were funny movie that we're trying to make. And that doesn't make it bad, but it's nothing like what Ghostbusters one and two was. And the last one got kind of a pass for that. I liked afterlife a lot. It got a pass for that because of all the nostalgia and stuff like that. And this one's like full on Marvel level, just like squeaky clean, just like produced by a computer. feel like it came out of a bottle. Yeah. Like well, it's just, there's, it's not the Ghostbusters, man. Afterlife. I liked a lot because I think they did a good job of a send off for Hell Ramis. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, and I did get emotionally involved in that movie and I, and I did cry at the end, but this movie, um, while Afterlife had some adult scenarios in it that I could relate to and I could, I could, you know, the, especially the death with Hell Ramis and, and, and that kind of like uh, more serious tone. This one wanted to get back, I think to the basics of what Ghostbusters was all about was having fun. But it it's not for uh, it's like an adult showing up at Chuck E. Cheese and like smacking kids <laughs> out of the way so they can play skee ball. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I'm trying to fit in, but I can't yeah. because it's not made for us. It's not made for my or our age group anymore. It's not, and that's fine if they're gonna take it in that direction. But ultimately, when I was watching it, I was like, man, uh, as much as I love seeing the Ghostbusters on screen and and hearing the music and stuff, uh, this is gone in a totally different direction away from, I think the fan base or the, the, the majority of the fan base that supported Ghostbusters. Uh, it's better than 20, anything's better than 2016. A fucking, uh, hot steaming turd in the summer day is better than 2016, but <laughs> oh, the, the, it's not, you play. yeah. I, uh, but, um, yeah, and you know the, the the cameos by Bill Murray and and Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. The bad thing and Annie Potts. The, the the bad thing is you saw most of it in the fucking trailer. Again, if they hadn't shown that shit in the trailer, it would have been a really cool surprise to see Bill Murray show up at the firehouse. Yeah, and like do that cool thing where he like hits. That's that, that shit was funny, dude. Like yeah. he hits the wall and the fucking whiskey pops out. He's like liquid courage, and like I was like it was like for just a second, I'm like oh my god, I was transported back to the original '84 Ghostbusters. Yeah. But again, they showed that in the trailer, so I already knew it was coming. But that was still funny. Um, this movie, generally, what I what I got from it was uh, it was a really cool spectacle of a lot of flashy lights and spe uh, and ghostly things that were like obviously uh, heavily relied on CGI. 
but it just made me miss the opportunity that they had with using Paul Rudd as the main focal point going forward and actually recreating what we had in 84. Uh, you could have cast Rudd and the, the character Nadim. I, and, and you said it earlier uh, off screen that that's what you thought they were going to do where they were kind of like setting it up yeah. where Gooberson, which is Paul Rudd's character was going to like, and, and, and Spangler's daughter, like the girl he's dating, we're going to like take it over with Nadine coming in, the Flame Master, like rounding it out and then getting a fourth Ghostbuster. Because listen, Finn Wolfhart, literally pointless. Yeah. Pointless. Like he The whole was, movie was just like, I'm 18, I'm an adult. And yeah, that was it. He was like the fucking kid in American Beauty that just films shit because he thinks it's sexy. <laughs> like, that's all he was. He was just a guy that just stood in the background with a proton yeah. pack on. Like, is that you? Like, it, dude, I don't like Finn Wolfhard. I think he's great in Stranger Things. He's not great in this. And McKenna Grace, she's a good actress. Don't get me wrong. I think that she did good with the part that she's been given. But at yeah. the end of the day, I don't... Man, the more I watch this movie, I was like, I missed... 84 and and 80 uh 89 ghostbusters 2 even even, even further like, yeah oh and that's the thing with with her character the movie could have been called phoebe and the ghostbusters because mm -hmm. the entire thing is about her phoebe and, the phoebe and there's this whole subplot that takes up and honestly the movie's too long you could have got 35 oh, yeah, to 40 minutes out of this movie and specifically her whole subplot there's this thing between her and another ghost don't spoil just yeah no, it just goes on and on and on and you're sitting here like this is literally it's not it's so far from what stupid. ghostbusters it's was stupid. i don't even know what it is and i don't even care it's just so corny and trite and like you, it could have been a CW TV show for that entire storyline. And I don't even know what they're trying to do there, but it didn't really tie into anything. As we said before, the villain looked cool as hell in the trailer. Like, and I even heard some people say, oh, this movie's scary. What? Have you, the Buttercream Gang is as scary as this movie these, is. These, they're the kind of people that, like, when it's scary for them is when they miss their Uber ride. <laughs> Which like, is, oh my God. scary. That can be scary. I, it can be scary, but in like the wrong it, that's the that's the most fear you've ever had to deal with in your life. Yeah. I missed my Uber. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a cool concept. Like the bad yeah, guys. Dude, are, he was joke. He's, he's a joke. He's a cool concept, but it's so CG. It looks like Steppenwolf mm -hmm. from from the damn Justice League movie. Like yeah. that kind of stuff. Without without Joss, uh, no, the Joss Whedon Justice League. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it before, which is a great freaking point. The bad guys in the first movie, specifically Vigo in the second movie, had so much personality yep. and so much specialness to him. This was literally just pulled out of. They even do the the sky opening up, beam into the sky at one they point. They did the, well. It yeah. is such. It, it is just such a Walmart retread of all these like superhero movies and stuff you see for so much of it. Peppered, peppered with little moments of cool Ghostbusters stuff. Salt Bay. Yeah. <laughs> whether, no, I mean, whether, we, it it, whether it involves like a, a, a cool new ghost, which some, some of those were. There were like some neat new ghosts and stuff like well, that. Well, I like Slimer. Slimer shows up, which was cool. He was great. I love Slimer, but yeah. uh, he reminds me of my dog. He's like, you got shit up? Where are they at? <laughs> uh, but no, I, I liked the whole little subplot with Slimer. I thought that was cool. Uh, I just wish Finn Wolfhard wasn't the main guy in it. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it was like they were trying their best to make him fit in, and it was so stupid. They never. But, uh, but he, it was like Gale and Scream Six. Yeah, like, it just it doesn't kill her off. There's no but reason. For either this. way, um, yeah, you're right. Uh, when I was mentioning uh, Gozer the Gozerian in the first Ghostbusters and Vigo the Carpathian in the second Ghostbusters, they're very unique. They're very different, and they and they work. They work. They're they they are original concepts that work in those individual movies. They took a swing and a miss, which I respect. They tried to do something different outside of Gozer and Vigo, which is cool. You got to try something different. But this one was not it. Like this one, um, and it's so weird because there's so much material that they can draw from in the real Ghostbusters. For example, Nightmare King, like like the real Ghostbusters. The cartoon came out in the '80s. There were some of those episodes that were fucking scary. As a kid, when you watched them and they were wrote in a way that it, like adults could enjoy it too, those um, monsters or those creatures could have worked better in this movie than, you know, like, listen, somebody fucking froze me back into Egypt and shit and I'm pissed. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. You know like, I mean, it was so forget... This movie... It was a Suicide Squad villain. Yeah, I had fun. <laughs> I will say I had decent fun watching it, but it's forgettable as fuck. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like, it's also, it commits a, a movie sin of being boring. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, there were so many moments in this movie where I was like, damn, I am bored right now. Whether we're, we're talking about this deep story with McKenna Grace or whatever, there's moments where the Ghostbusters would show up and they would do some cool stuff. But honestly, for most of the movie, 
They sep- even the old Ghostbusters, they're separate. They're in their mm-hmm. own moment. And then finally, you know, obviously, as you expect, there, there are moments when they come together. But it felt like they were like, uh, it's silly. Like, we have to figure out something to do with them. And I won't, it's a spoiler, so I won't say it. But what they end up having the actual old school Ghostbusters do is so pointless. Like, it's yeah. like, hey, well, I'll let you pump the gas. Like, you're a big man. I'm going to let you pump the gas, you're an Grandpa. old person. And we don't like old people around here. <laughs> but here's the other thing, too. Um, the, uh, I shouldn't say that because I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Like, I don't No, I don't know if that's a known fact, but there's another uh, character that, that they bring back from the past. And, and it, I, it, I don't know if it's age or if something's wrong with him. I don't know. It just didn't come off in the same way that, um, well, Walter Peck's in the trailer, so we're good. Oh, there. then fuck it. Okay. Walter Peck, the guy, <laughs> the guy that played Walter Peck comes back as the mayor of New York and, like they're trying to do, they're trying to recreate the the entire scenario from the first movie where the mayor didn't like them and they were like having to justify what they're doing. I I didn't. Um, it was toothless. It was really bad, dude. It was really bad. And but there are moments in it, like, dude, I'm like, if if that if it was just revolving around that character, like um Paul Rudd, like when he was talking about. He's like, yeah, he's like the sewer ghost. We had to, the sewer ghost was like flying through Soho like it was Middle Earth. <laughs> Like, that was a good like just too. like the little tiny things like dude that's the kind of shit i want to see yeah because paul rudd could very well be a pete bankman type of uh, character in a new generation of ghostbusters mm. but again you guys are like overshoot shooting that and like let's focus in on mckinnon grace and and the spangler thing and i get it i understand i think it works for afterlife but i i would have hoped that at this point we would have graduated from that and maybe taking the reins away from they kind of did that though because they were like oh she's too young she's 16 years old or 15 she can't be a ghostbuster that uh, and then paul right <laughs> that was another great line he was like well we don't pay her <laughs> and he's like oh so child labor <laughs> yeah. and that was the thing so so there's this whole subplot going on with mckenna grace's character uh, mm-hmm. amongst the like 17 mckenna grace subplots that there are where they're like uh the, the city and Walter Peck is basically like, you can't have a 15-year-old girl dangling out of the side. And this is in the trailer. Yeah. You can't have a 15-year-old girl dangling out of the side of, of, of an Ecto-1 shooting and, and busting up buildings and stuff like that. And when Walter Peck's character is explaining this to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, but you don't understand. She's so smart. I'm like, this movie is so broken in a way that like i'm siding with walter peck i'm like no that actually is child labor like you can't be doing that actually, side- that is dangerous for her it's dangerous for everyone in the city like i find myself sympathizing with yeah. walter peck and i'm pretty sure that's not the idea but like this is dumb like why do we have a 15 year old ghostbuster this is fucking why do we have children ghostbusters running around that's why I, to sell tickets that's why i was siding that's with why. walter peck i don't want kid ghostbusters i want <laughs> i want my adult ghostbusters i don't know why it's fucking hard but it's apparently it's a, it's a goddamn impossible mountain that we cannot uh trek today we gave Either so way, much shit to 2016 it's and, bad and it wasn't it's, because it, on no, our end, it wasn't women. because there were women but it's because they made a line in the sand like, and also we're gonna Women. Paul Fig's a bitch, and that's also why. But we we gave this a pass, and what this is doing is basically they're like, actually, like they told us, no, we're gonna bring back the original Ghostbusters. It's like, no, now we're doing kids. It's kids Ghostbusters. And if you wanted to make a Ghostbusters Junior series and have yeah. it be like a gateway thing, whatever, like that would be a cool idea. But actually, you like, know what? I'd be into that. The, the, Take the you're, kids. You're right. Um, what you could do with the plot of this movie is make it a Netflix show. Sure. Like, and like have it tie into an actual cinematic Ghostbusters right. movie. But the point is, is that there is nothing left other than some nostalgia bits. <clears throat> and again, the, the equipment that they use and some of the ghosts are pretty fun. There's nothing left of what the original DNA of Ghostbusters. It's been very to. diluted, very watered down. It's, and it's I, mass I, produced. I will say there, there were some cool, like they had the Ghostbusters engineers, which was kind of cool. I kind of liked that, but I didn't like the fact that, uh, Paul Rudd and family were just living at the ghost house and they didn't know how to fucking really like maintain the equipment like that, 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 that like it, it goes so far away from like Egon Spangler and Ray stands being there. And yeah, they were like nerds, but they, they kept their equipment they were entrepreneurs. In yeah, well, they, well, they kept their equipment and then the, well, the entrepreneur was, uh, uh, Peter. And then Winston was like the everyday guy. Like, see, the balance was just so good in the original. But these guys are just like living there rent fucking free and they don't know how to work the fucking equipment and they got to have engineers come in and fix their shit. I I just thought thought it was weird. I just thought it was weird. It's like, you guys are Ghostbusters now and you don't even know how to maintain your own fucking equipment. Yeah, and it's it's also underthought and like undercooked, the whole story is. And and also, even with, Win- with Winston. So like, there's a, there's, a, there's a point in the movie where the kid, uh, McKenna Grace, goes out and like some bad shit happens. And they kind of made Winston an asshole in that scenario. He's like yelling at her. He was like, why oh, yeah. would you do that? And it's like literally 
her life was in danger, Winston. Like, why would you? So they, they sort of make Winston an asshole in a moment. And he comes back around at the end. But even then, I was like, Winston doesn't feel like Winston. No. Like, he feels like a completely different character. And then, obviously, Dan Aykroyd was good in the movie. And you could tell but that he, he kept to sm- be there. But he kept smiling. Like, he was like a fucking grumpy old man. Like, he kept going, mm. yeah. When she was like, psychokinetic energy, she's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really felt like, okay. like, we're going we're gonna to take Grandpa to the concert. And we're going to let him have fun. But we're not going to take him to the actual dude, dude, concert. You know what they missed? Like, they, 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 it, it would have got me. It would have made me cry. There was a moment uh, where uh, Ernie Hudson, Winston, and and Dan Aykroyd, Ray, were out in the hallway. Could have been great. And they were arguing, and he was like, "Because I don't want anything to happen to you, Ray." Because and it would have been great. It's like because Egon died or something like you know. They had said like you're my family, and you're I don't want anything happening to you. Yeah. You know, he's talking about their golden years. I think that could have been a great fucking moment, and it was ruined by stupid. Yeah. It was just ruined by stupid. I'm like, you guys had something really special. To see two original Ghostbusters arguing, like they used to back in the original Ghostbusters, they would argue about how excited were. And, you know, I was thinking, remember when uh, Winston and, and Ray were driving around the city in, in the 84 Ghostbusters? Smoking Ciggies. Like, smoking Ciggies, like, listen, tunes. And they were like, and then, and I feel like Ray, Winston was trying to say, is like, you got, you're my family and, and I lost one already. I lost Egon and yeah. you guys are all I got left. See, they, they left that shit on the floor and I'm like, man, that could have really emotionally anchored this movie in a way that none of the other parts of the movie had. Yeah. And they just missed it. Instead, it was just a subplot. And you could tell that the movie's just not interested in them. They're doing that Wouldn't it be cool though, Imagine that, dude. The entire movie about them trying to keep doing it. And they can't. Yeah, that, that would have been a whole movie in itself. And like, I, and I found myself wondering that, too. And again, the the, the new character they, they brought in, he feels like a Ghostbuster. He's funny as hell. He's a, he does a really good job. The oh. guy in the trailer who's trying to pawn shit, the ripped comedian now. Oh, Nadim. Uh, Nadim's a character. Him and Paul Rudd were probably the highlights of the they movie. They were great, yeah. They were both so good in the movie. And then a couple moments with the Ghostbusters that came in there. But ultimately, like... What this- I w- well, let me, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but li- literally, imagine this. Winston reopens the ghost house, right? Which uh, is what they promised us at the end of the last movie, right? And they all come back, and 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 I and this this should have been the plot a long time ago, right? They keep on trying to do it, and when the new Ghostbusters are trying to do things, they keep taking over, but maybe their hearts, like you know, they're like yeah. running out of breath, and they're like, you can't keep doing this, and then they finally have to uh, concede. Yeah. But you could have this whole emotional moment of them passing the torch, really passing the torch, and be like, you're right, and then you guys have earned this or something. Yeah. They didn't do any of that stuff. I, they, 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 you're right. They just skipped over a lot of plot, and they just invited the old men from the fucking barbecue. Like, you guys could come over here and give a toast. Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you a lever to pull. Yeah. You know, at some point, but like, and that's it. But like, and and again, at the end of the last movie, I, I wasn't the hugest fan of Afterlife, but I got what they did, and it was enough. But at the end of the movie, what really got me excited was the stuff with Winston. And we're going to open up the firehouse yeah. again, and we're going to do all that stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, they're going to do something cool. They never fulfill that promise in never. this movie. Like, they're there. They're in New York, which I will say. Dan Aykroyd has a lot. He has more than I thought he would have in the movie. That's true. He is, he is in it more. But, like, I thought, like, it was nice to have them back in New York. I will say that. Having that setting just fit way better for sure. But like at the same time, down. it just felt watered down. Yeah, everything felt watered down. It was down. so safe, and it was so like yeah, it was it was like a CW show for most of it. But like I, I really again, the ghosts were good. Um, the movie's not a terrible movie. Not the main ghost. Uh, no, no. But like the side ghost and the extra stuff they did with that. There's some cool ideas, and they never flesh them out. So the movie's decent. Like it's watchable. It's about 40 minutes too long, and they focus on McKenna Grace for the entire thing and some dumb shit that yeah. I'm really not interested in. But again, I guess it's not made for us. But again, also Ghostbusters. It wasn't made for kids when it came out, Never but it was, was, it was, everyone loved it. Kids loved it because it was just so good. It wasn't because it was built for kids. Yeah. So I really don't understand this version that we're doing. Some of it felt like a toy commercial. Like it, yeah. it felt like they're trying to, like they even bring in um, the Ecto C, which was cool to see. Don't get me wrong, but the Ecto C is, is, is from the cartoon. Which is the motorcycle buggy thing. Yeah. That's from the cartoon. That literally sold off the shelves in the 80s as a cartoon expansion. But yeah, I, like I, I feel like ultimately, man, I I, I, um, I give the movie a 6.5, uh, to be fair. And I mean, yeah, it, like I will, I will consider this canon. I will move from Ghostbusters 1 to Afterlife and this, and that's fine. It feels like a continuation, a poor continuation. 2016 is terrible. Like, it literally just says fuck you to everything about the history of Ghostbusters. At least this one tried, but it is 100% apparent that it is not made for people that grew up with Ghostbusters. Yeah. It is made for a new generation of children to... And that's great. Cool. And it's fine uh, for that. But, but that, yeah. but yeah, you could have... You could have... This could have been produced by fucking Disney. And like... And that would have been fine. Yeah. 
I, uh, that's that's the exact way I put it too. I give it a five point five. I think it's barely above average. I think as a movie, even watching it like with no Ghostbusters ties to it, I'm like, there's some fun stuff in this, and there's some cute monsters, and there and there's some there's some there's really... some moments though. There's some moments like man, it could have been so good. Yeah, and I, I do love seeing the old Ghostbusters, and Paul Rudd's funny as hell. And I actually I did I did get a little bit emotional when he's dealing with the stepdad stuff that he's going through. That was you cool. Yeah, when he's coming through. Well, the 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 the, the, uh, the dad thing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was like, cool. That yeah. stuff was pretty good. Like they did a decent job with that but it's but, I was like, all, it's not, it, but it doesn't belong in the fucking movie it just doesn't feel it's the wrong kind of movie to do it, it in. and it, it they don't spend enough time on any one thing to actually nail any one out even well, that aspect they didn't nail it it was just it just because paul rudd's so good it worked and again mckenna grace is a, is a fine actress she's not there's other but i'm more interested in in uh gooperson and yeah. paul rudd he's a fucking science teacher from uh oklahoma or wherever the fuck it is yeah he uh, got with this girl. He's trying to deal, trying to be a stepdad, trying to do. I think his story was way more interesting. Yeah, like trying to fit in as a stepdad and a Ghostbuster at the same time. I mean, you got you got a lot of uh, things to play with in that in that arena. And again, you also missed the opportunity. Like, dude, there are so many times uh, that the Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters, are interacting that you really could have done something cool about like memory or like what we used to be and like. I care about you, man. And I don't want, but they missed all these opportunities, man. They missed yeah. so many. And I don't know if it was because they were like, well, well, we already did that with afterlife. We're not trying to weigh the film down with emotion, but I'm like, I don't think that would be weighing it down. I think that would just um, clarify how much they mean to each other. Well, the last and movie was more about Spangler. Well, they're brother- they focused on uh-huh. them in this but the, movie. But the Ghostbusters fine. are brothers. Yeah. And like and and Winston. Oh, the camaraderie. The camaraderie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone. and that's what I mean. I wanted more of that. And that's probably the best part. But there of the was first only two movies. Ernie Hudson and and uh, Dan Aykroyd in the hallway. That was the closest yeah. we got back to. Because even when Bill Murray shows up and he's like, "Mel, it's in uniform." We'd already seen that shit in the trailer, so it was ruined. Right. But like even then, it was like it just felt so superficial and 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 like added on or tacked on. I think that's the key to the entire thing, right there, dude. Is that the 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 highlight yeah. of Ghostbusters one and two was it was a great movie on its own, but the thing that made it special was the camaraderie between yeah. the Ghostbusters, including Janine. Uh, yeah. and, and and Sporty Lewis Weaver and, and like all that like but the camaraderie between them and that <laughs> aspect of the film is just gone. It feels like we just sucked out the Hollywood version of what was special about it and produced that for yeah. a, for a new age. And like again, does it make a terrible movie? It's not like fucking watching Night Swim. No, uh, it's a barely above average, just decent like tent pole. Type I give it of a movie. six five, but the more I talk about it, I want to give it a six zero. Oh, but I'm gonna give it a six five because that's what yeah. I said. I want to fucking stand by it. But it is very stand pla- by your man. It's very plastic. It's yeah. very a plastic movie, and I, I it, it, look, it's durable plastic. It's like, <laughs> you know that you got a decent toy from Walmart, but it's not, from but it's not gonna be like your kids are gonna be like, this isn't the Toy Story version. I'm like, <laughs> well, then you can get a job and buy your own. Yeah, uh, but no, at the end of the day, it's a six five for me, a five five for him. Um, I would say, man, I'm gonna. Take the kids. No, well, yeah. If you got kids, go see it in the theater with them. If you don't, wait for it on video. Sure, because there's uh, honestly the special effects are pretty much just the regular I, yeah, CGI I, type shit. You wait for it see. on. Wait for it for 4K and watch it. Uh, yeah, just wait for it at home. If yeah. you don't got kids, just wait for it. I would agree with that. We love your fucking faces, and uh, we'll see you guys super soon. Can't wait to cross the streams with you in the bathroom. <laughs> That was scarier than that fucking <laughs> frozen ghost. <laughs> scarier than anything in Ghostbusters. I know. Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits because he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you, fire. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.